Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be doing this rocket liftoff. Let's get started. Um, I've got this reference image here. I'll just bring it over so you can see it. Ta-da! Very cool photograph of this rocket taking off. Don't know anything about this rocket. Don't even know what country this is. Uh, let's see flags. Uh, oh, oh, two flags. This is a joint operation. First thing I want to do is model out the head of the cone. So. I'm going to just get rid of the camera and the light for now. We're going to keep the default cube. I know, right? Gasp. Actually, no, delete. Okay, Shift A, Mesh, Cylinder. Let's scale it up a little bit. Go into Edit Mode 3 to go into Face Mode. Click that top face and X to delete. Let's go to Edge Mode with 2. And let's hit E and S to scale. Grab Z. We're going to bring it up. And bring it up a little bit more. And E, Z. Bring this up to about here, EZ down a little bit. And I'm gonna actually, what I'll do is I'm gonna split my view and I'm gonna switch this to the image editor so you can see this thing with me because I think it'd be really helpful. All right, so we're focusing on this section right now and I'm right here, that's where I'm thinking. All right, E and Z, we're gonna come up a little bit to this little bit here, EZ scale, E Z E S to scale. I'm just gonna bring it out. Looks like there's some kind of Divot, although maybe not. Maybe that's just like a painting thing. I guess it doesn't make sense to have a divot that would like wreck the structural integ integrity. Um, e S and grab Z can come up a little bit. E S go in. Uh, e S grab Z maybe to here, and then E S come out. E grab Z, bring it up. E S in. E Z up and scale it in a little bit. And then we're going to go F3 grid fill. Cool. Looks good. We're going to come down. We've got these kind of like, I don't know what these things are, but they're cool looking. So uh, let's select, let's look at this thing straight on. Um, maybe yeah, from the Y direction. And I'll try and select the centermost face. I think that's pretty centered. I'm going to go Shift S cursor to selected. I'm going to go uh, out of edit mode and we're going to make these separate. So I'm going to make another cylinder by putting our cursor there. I'll put this there. I'll go into edit mode, grab Z. I'm just going to line up this face with the origin right there. That way I can rotate um, from it and get it the right spot. So I'm going to go to three and scale that down. And this one here, we're going to E and S and then E and Z, bring it up. Grab Z, bring it right up here and then S to scale so it goes inside. Um, I do want a lip though. So let's bring that back down. I did that wrong. Actually, I'm going to undo that. E and Z is what I want. There we go. And then scale it down. And that should be good. Although it looks like there's like a double bit. So I'm going to do control R to create a loop cut, click to commit, and then S to scale just to bring that in a touch, and then control B to bevel that, and then E and S just to bring it in. And we're intersecting with the inner geometry. So I'm going to go to face mode and just scale that in until this bit is smaller than that bit. There we go. Cool. Now I'm going to rotate on the X, maybe 45, negative 45, rotate X, negative 45. And it's much smaller than this. So we're going to hit S to scale and bring that right down. And there we go. That's pretty cool. I might switch to local and then scale Z. And that will stretch it out a bit. That looks about right. I'm going to apply the transform. So I'm going to go F3, apply, transform. And that didn't work. Uh, F3, apply, um, all transforms. There we go. We'll apply all the transforms. So now it's location is zero and it's rotation is zero. And the origin of the subject is right down here at the center of our scene. Now what I can do with that is I can go into edit mode or actually even better, I can just come to the wrench, click add modifier and search for mirror. And we're just gonna mirror this on the Y. And because the origin is right in the middle and this is offset from the middle, it's going to mirror it along the origin, which is there. So that's how that works. We're going to shift, duplicate, rotate Z 90 degrees, and that will make that work. We're going to turn off mirroring on the X. We don't need that. So just the Y. Perfect. All right, we got that bit. 
proportionally that feels all right. Okay, let's keep going. Now we've got some little like dimple things that are like poking out of this. So let's decide if we're going to do those with a control R loop cut, bring it down a little bit and then control R again to do the top bit. So I'm thinking like the bottom and then the top of this and it pokes out. So we are going to need probably, let's see, we'll pick a face. It lines up with one of those. So we can look at this straight on from the Y again and let that be the sort of hero angle. And uh, it looks like there is no direct center face here for the Y. So I'm going to go three and select both of those and hit I to inset. And I'm just going to come in a little bit like this. And then I'm going to make sure I'm set to normal. Because if I switch to my controller here, if I go to local, you can see the local space looks like this, very similar to the world space. But the normal space will point in the same direction as the face itself, which is out like this. So now I can grab this and pull it out. And that'll be pretty good. We might hit E and Z. Um, e, bring it out and then scale that down just to kind of round it out a little bit more because it looks quite rounded. Okay, I think that's pretty good. We'll let um, Blender round the rest of it out. There's also a little notch that comes up here. So we're going to go Control R, grab that, Control R again to find the top of the notch. I'm going to look straight on at the X direction. Actually, it's not quite like that, is it? It's more like 45 degrees. So it might be that one there. So I'll just grab that and I might grab the equivalent on the other side. So let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, bam, right there. And with these, we're going to hit, uh, we're going to switch to local and we will hit E and then hit escape and then grab Y. Actually, we're just going to grab, grab Y a little bit. And then we're going to go to two to get edge mode and grab the top edges of both of these and grab Y for both of them and just push them out like that. And they're a bit skewed. So I might just line it up by eye a little bit. See, I'm grabbing that box, which allows me to just slide it along that plane. Cool. Looks pretty good. All right. Um, now I am thinking we're going to want to like mirror this thing as well. So we don't have to like perfectly match all that on all sides. So we will do that. But first, let's get down to this next section. So we're going to come down to this. Got some nozzles and a couple more bumps and a bit of a sphere thing and then these panels. So first let's define how big this segment needs to be. So if I kind of line it up here and see um, that needs to come down probably at about like that, I think. And then we're going to hit E and S to scale, come down a little bit, grab Z and down like that to get to this bit. In fact, I'll go back to here, control B to bevel. Just drag that a little bit and then three to go to face mode and then scale that down because it looks like there's a little bit of a lip edge there. I'll bring that up and then let's go back to edge mode, come here and we are going to create this lip. So E S E Z E S and then E Z grab Z, bring it down a little bit E S E Z and then ES again a little bit and then E and Z bring it down. All right, so now we're going to come to this bit here. Um, so it's a different color. So I will separate that just with some new faces and I'll bring that down. And then we've got this interesting lattice section. So I might just create a bit of a gap here. I'm going to delete that face and, and let's just take this and hit E and Z and come down, define a region for that um, that level area. And then what we can do, E and Z, come down a little bit further. And then for this bit, I can go Alt to, to uh, select all those. What we're going to do is go Select, Checker, Deselect, and then we're going to go Triangulate. And we'll go with Beauty and Beauty. And then we're going to select, reselect these guys. Then what we'll do is we will go F3 triangulate, but instead of beauty, we'll swap it to fix. So they go the other way. So now we get the same triangles, triangle shapes. See, and then what we can do, we'll go to edge mode, select, can I select similar? Like if I select that, I'm going to select similar face angles, maybe. Hey, that worked. <laughs> cool. All right. Select face angle. Bingo. 
And I'll look at this and I'll just deselect all this stuff with B to box select by holding down shift. Drag a box around all that. I just have these guys. And then what we can do is hit P to separate by selection. Okay, so now this is a separate object. Okay, and then we can go back into the mesh here. Look at this back at the side. Go to face mode, B to box select, and select those faces and then delete them. And we could go F3, convert to. So we're going to go mesh to curve, object curve. And now that it's a curve, can we extrude the curve? So go to geometry and depth. All right, so that looks pretty good. I think it works. If I switch the twist method to tangent from Z up, um, we get a slightly better result. I grab Z, bring that down, scale it up a bit. And then it's like it tapers in. So we're gonna go uh, E to extrude Z and then scale it back in. And what happens to it? I guess it just gets sort of disappears. And I'm gonna right click shade auto smooth. And I'm gonna add in some bevels to some of these spots, I think. So I'm gonna go into the edge mode here and hit control B to bevel and just pull that out a little bit and then roll my mouse wheel. And that will really soften up that. Same with here. I want these edges to still feel, you know, sharp-ish, but not perfection sharp. I'm gonna go Shift A mesh uh, cylinder and I'm gonna come over here and zero out its position to put it right back in the center. Cause remember our 3D cursor is kind of offset a little bit. And I'll bring this thing down um, I might try and define where I want the base to start and I'll scale it up to kind of get the right size for the rocket base. Now it looks like these things start relatively even and then taper inwards. So let's grab this one over E and S and E and Z, E, S, bring it up. And then E, and we're gonna come up to this bit. I just actually won't even scale it down. I'm just gonna go, E and then S E Z uh, E S and then E and come all the way up to where it's gonna kind of go into. And now what we can do is we can scale it all down using the proportional editing tool. So I can hit S to scale and then roll my mouse wheel to expand that. And this will taper the whole thing. That is good. And then I also need to grab X and bring the whole thing over. So I'm going to switch this to linear, grab X. Okay, I'm going to go to edge mode and grab this edge loop. And then I'm going to double tap G to slide it down and grab this edge loop. And we're going to scale this, turn portion lighting off, scale this down, grab X like that. Let's go shift a cylinder, go into edit mode, face mode, grab that. S to scale, bring it up, E, S, E, Z, E, up like that. I always forget that when you hit E, it automatically locks it on the Z. Um, and then I might control R, roll my mouse wheel, control B to bevel, and then decrease those. So it's just the one set, and then E and S. But I can get that sizing just right. And then once I'm happy, I can F3, apply transforms once again. And then we can add that mirror modifier and mirror on the Y. And then Shift D, rotate Z, 90. And I'm gonna go to my render tab and I'm gonna turn on ambient occlusion, blue and screen space reflections. And then I'm gonna switch over to rendered view. Now we need to put in an HDRI and I wanna use something like this, this sort of like just blue sky kind of look. Um, so I'll come up here and I'm gonna switch to my shader editor and I'll switch to the world shader. I'm just gonna jump over to polyhaven.com and grab an HDRI. So you just click on this and we can look for an HDRI. We're gonna come into our world shader and we're gonna look for an environment texture. Drop that down and we're gonna click open and just navigate to whatever file you've downloaded for your HDRI. Uh, all right, cool. So I picked my HDRI and uh, I've gone with this partly cloudy pure sky. I'm gonna grab texture coordinate node, drop that there, grab the mapping node, and this allows us to move it around. So I'm gonna take the generated coordinate, which is what it's already using by default, and I'll plug this into this mapping node. So we're basically inserting the mapping node into the chain so that we can add in some values. And I'm gonna use this to change its rotation. So I'm just gonna rotate this around. I'm gonna put the sun kind of off to the side. Behind it might be good, but 
just do it like this for now. And then I also like to add a sun lamp. So shift A, light, sun lamp. And I want to angle that sun lamp so it's similar to where the sun is. Come over here, turn it up to like 50 or something. Maybe not that strong, 20. Back to global, and I could just pivot it around a little bit. And just getting those to match up is good. Now let's go to the camera tab. So select the camera, come to the camera tab. We're going to go to viewport display. Let's turn passport two up to 0.999. And then um, I will zoom in so I can have a bit of a stronger view here. And let's start creating some materials for this guy. So let's do this big white material first. It's pretty, pretty universal. So um, I'll just zoom in a little bit and let's select the mesh. And I'm going to just put this on the whole thing. So I'm going to click this, click new, call this uh, rocket white. And I'm going to switch back to my object shader. All right, let's zoom right in. And let's think about what we're seeing here. So we've got some specular breakup, um, which we can emulate. We also have some slight paneling. You can see we've got some panels going on. So I know right away I want to use a Voronoi texture so I can get this paneling effect. You switch to, um, let's see, Manhattan, Chebyshev, I think, and then a color ramp. And let's plug the distance into the factor. And then let's switch this to, well, first I'll, I'll just plug it into the surface so we can see it. And I'm going to set this to constant. And that will give me a constant change. Now I can just drag this around until I get some panels like this. Um, now I can hit the plus symbol here to add another pip and then bring this around. And that will turn those panels into lines. And now I can add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. And then use the generated. And this will allow me to now shape this a little bit. Um, I can zoom out and just have a look at how it's looking across the whole thing. It's pretty good, actually. I just feel like maybe they're a bit too elongated. So I need to scale them on the maybe on the Z will give me what I want. Yeah. I just need to bring the Z up. Keep X and Y set to one. And I'll bring Z up. And that will give me some nice uh, breakup variation to these guys. That's really cool. All right, so we'll use this. Um, I want these lines to go, having them come out is actually pretty good. So using white is fine. It's gonna be very subtle, all right? So let's plug the principal BSDF back in and let's first use this system, bring this over, with a mix color node. And we're gonna use this as the factor to mix between two different colors. And I'll plug this into the base color. And let's come up here and let's have a look. Um, one, we'll do one that's just like a slightly darker color than the other. Let's see which way we wanna go with it. I guess we'll make the base one a bit brighter and that one just a little bit darker. And again, we want this to be really subtle. Now, I want to also add in a bump and we can use this in a similar way. So um, I will grab a color ramp. So I'm going to go for a color ramp right here. And I'll plug this into that. And now I've got a little more control over it. I can plug this into the height. And then I can take these down a little bit. I can make this a bit more gray, make this one a bit more gray, just bringing them closer together so these values aren't so extreme. And then I can plug this into the normal. There we go. And I'm going to make this distance a bit small. So I'm going to go 0.1 just to shape it a bit. And that looks pretty good. All right. Now we've got some cool systems. We've got stuff affecting the, uh, the bump. We've got stuff affecting the base color. But we also need a little bit more. We're going to need to affect the roughness. Now, if I turn the roughness all the way down, we're going to start getting a reflective kind of shiny surface. You can see it up here on the tip and that shininess spreads out the further we go. And you can see the shininess is really broken up by something. So let's get some noise in here. And we will use noise to simulate that along with this system over here. So I will plug this into the surface. Let's have a look at it. And I'm gonna take the scale right up and the roughness, I'll turn this up to 10. And the deep detail also up to 10. Bring the scale down actually to like something low maybe. 
Now we're getting a lot of stretching on this, um, but that's all right. We can use the same the same mapping system. So let's bring that over and have a look at that. It looks pretty good. So let's take this to start with, and we're going to use that to determine our roughness. So I'll plug this back in here. And then I need to map these colors within two range. So I can use a mixed color again if I want, and then use this as the factor. It's kind of the same as using a color ramp like we did here. And we're going to plug this result into here, but we need to kind of pick the baseline roughness. And I think 0.08 is a pretty good baseline, nice and shiny. So I'm going to copy that number and I'll come in here and I'll paste that into the value of the first number. Um, I'll also paste it here in the second and we'll plug this into the roughness. So nothing's going to change yet because these two are the same. And I just need to take this and make it either less shiny or more shiny. Okay, I think we'll need to increase the contrast. So instead of a mix node, we're going to use a color ramp. And this is the advantage of using a color ramp. You can change the contrast really nicely. Um, I'll plug this into the roughness. And now we can drag these around till we really start to see the difference between the two of them. So see here, now we've got a nice patterning that's going to work. It sounds good. Now there is a lot of like sub detail and stuff. This is like also like kind of like a frost that's developing up on the system. So we might want to actually use this a little bit in our bump. So let's try mixing this in. I'm going to grab all these and just moving them back and I will move these back and then let's take this system and pipe it in here and mix it into this. So we'll leave this for all that. And then I'm going to grab a mix color and I will drop it here and let's take this system and plug it into the B um, socket. And I'm going to switch this to multiply. And then we're going to turn the factor way down. That's giving us a really nice combination of details. All right, great. Now we also need a little bit more. So there's some other colors that I see peeking through here and it looks like, like a clear coat uh, kind of thing. So I might take the coat up for the weight. Let's let that load. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's make this uh, gray section next. And I think it's gonna be the same thing that we use for these guys as well. It could be the same material. I wouldn't mind that. Um, so let's come over here to this section, which is our center area. I'm gonna put rocket white on it. And I'm gonna click the double paper icon and call this rocket gray. And then what I can do is come over here and change the colors. So I'll take this and we'll push it down to a gray and this one as well. And then we can assign it to wherever we need to. I'm going to go into edit mode and just have a look. I might make a control R loop cut right here. And then let's, uh, let's see, go three and hold down alt to select that group. And then I want to, um, let's see, I want to check or deselect. Um, but I want to, let's see, deselected one, I want to have selected two. That'll be good. Should we go three? No, I think two is going to work. And then what I'm going to do is hit I to inset, go in a little bit, and then E and S to scale those guys into the center. Just a little bit. And then inset that. Just a little bit. There we go. And cool. So let's look at this thing dead on. Go to x-ray mode. And I'm going to hit B to box select. I'm going to try and grab all of that. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a new socket for this object for the materials. And then grab this rocket gray and click assign. There we go. So we can come here and go into edit mode and we can grab this group like this new socket and we're going to assign rocket gray to it but then click the double level paper icon to make it another one we'll call this rocket orange and we'll click assign and then let's change the color we can actually just color pick this now let's get um what else do we need we need these like um, loops around it the whole, all of the white might benefit from this. So let's try adding those in. I'm just going to zoom in here, have a look at the white. And I'm going to click Rocket White, and I'm going to grab the Wave uh, texture. 
And let's bring this up here. And we're going to plug the factor into the surface. And let's see, I need to get a texture coordinate mode. And let's have a look at what might work. Object's not going to work. Is UV going to work? UVs might work. Yeah. Can go um, for the generated. Oh, there we go. That works. Nice. Um, cool. So with the generated coordinate, we don't really need the mapping node. And then we can take this scale. If we set the second one to Z, take that scale. Um, how big do we want these? How much, how spaced out are they? They're about like that. And then we can do is grab a color ramp, drop this here, and we can slide this in to get it really close. Maybe set it to ease, make that fall off really nice. And then what we can do is add this into the bump of our system, and I think it'll work out really well. So let's unplug the surface, grab these guys, bring it over, bring the BSDF, plug it back into the surface. Doink. Let's grab these dudes, and we're going to add them in right around here somewhere. So let's grab this, Shift D, put that there. So we've got another multiply, another mix color node, sorry. Bring this in, we're going to mix it into the bump. I can turn that factor right up. And as we go, it's going to make them increase. Although it looks like they're going down and I want them to go out. So, And then the black one needs to be white. There we go, now they're going the right way. All right, cool. Now we need this like misty stuff coming off of these guys. So this is going to be a bit of a challenge. How are we going to do this? I'm thinking we could have some kind of shader effect as opposed to actually using volumetrics. Let's try something. I'm going to go Shift A, Mesh Plane. And I'm going to scale it up. And scale Y, rotate X 90 degrees. Apply this now. So F3, Apply Transforms. And I want to apply, uh, bring this drop down up. I don't want to do the location. I'll just leave that as is. With the rotation and the scale, I'll apply. So these are all zeroed out, and the scale is now 1. And I'm going to put a shader on this, and I'm going to call it uh, Smoke. And I'm going to come to the tool, um, sorry, the options, and we're going to switch this from opaque to alpha hashed, and the same for the shadow. And then what I want to do is come over here, and we're going to grab a gradient texture. And I'm going to plug this factor into the alpha. Now, we're going to figure out how to make this thing go transparent. Um, as you can see already, it's working. I'll grab a color ramp, and I will drop this here. Now we can make that fall off transition a bit sharper. Texture coordinate node, mapping node, generated into the vector, vector into the vector. Rotate the Y 90, 90. So you can see it's cutting it halfway. Let's we'll this back to ease. And we can just create a nice feathered transition around that middle point. And then what I'm going to do is introduce some noise into this UV. So I'm going to come over here and we're going to add a mix color node and drop it here. And then I'm going to add a uh, noise texture and plug the factor into B. And this is going to distort the shape quite nicely. So I can turn that scale down so I get large wispy clouds. Maybe turn the detail and the roughness up. So I'm going to grab the generated coordinate and then I'm going to grab a mapping node. It just feels a bit too stretched. There we go. By taking the scale up. All right. Now let's line this up. My idea is to literally just put this up intersecting our object. I think we're going to need something to soften this side so it can really blend in. We can really stack these. So that means we need to have another black pip at the end. So I'll come over here and set that to black. Um, we need to just adjust this and bring this up till we can't see the other edge. Something I also probably want to do is add a little bit of emission. So I might just turn that up. That way, if we are in shadow, we still show up a touch. Awesome. 
Okay, now that we've got all of that, let's do the firepower. So what we're gonna do is a similar kind of setup actually. In fact, we can use pretty much the same shader, I think. And I'm going to grab a mesh, what do I want? Hmm. Go for a plane, scale it up, rotate X 90, rotate Y 90. Let's come to the material tab. I'm gonna grab uh, the smokel. And I'm gonna click the paper icon to make it another one. And we'll call this fire. And with this, what I want to do is come down here and grab X, grab Y, grab Z, just lining it up with the base a little bit. And we're going to turn the emission strength way up. And we're going to give it the same color. So I'm going to pick this orange, I think. Probably go a little more saturated with it. You duplicate that and grab Z. And there we have it, the finished rocket taking off. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot. If you did, hit that like button and don't forget to leave me a comment. Let me know what kind of tutorials you'd like to see in the future. Now, if you want to see the full uncut version of this tutorial, it runs for about uh, about an hour, about 50, 50 minutes roughly. Um, and I'd go into a lot more detail. So if there's stuff here that you want to see how I did, you didn't quite catch it in the main tutorial, Go over to Patreon, you can join on the first level. Um, any of the levels will give you access to the uncut tutorials. Or if you don't like Patreon, you can join here on YouTube at the all access pass level or higher. And that will give you access to the uncut tutorials as well. So lots of extra content there if you're interested. So go check it out. Special thanks to everyone who's a patron support already and everyone that supports on YouTube as well. And thanks to all of you for watching. Really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, have a great week. See ya. Thank you.